A couple things, kind of housekeeping stuff I want to do with you first um, before we um, go further. At, um, the Wednesday nights of this month, except for the first one that I missed, um, our pastor wanted me to teach on prayer. And, uh, and on Sunday nights, we've been doing that as well. And he um, was away uh, praying a few years ago, and the Lord gave him uh, this term, on the wall, prayer. And so that term came from Isaiah, and it talks about, you know, how they were in uh, walled cities and that they were uh, uh, stationed people on the wall to uh, protect the city and uh, to see if, you know, friend or foe are coming and blessings and, you know, not so nice things coming. And so they would sit on the wall and watch over the city. And so uh, that's part of what we do here is um, on the stay on the wall, on God's wall, and watch uh, over his things uh, in the earth, uh, us individually, us as a uh, church family, our city, and the nation, and the world. And so as he directs us to pray. So that's part of what this is all about is, um, you know, us taking our places on the wall and praying. And so uh, we're going to do some of that uh, here tonight. And um, we're going to talk about a little bit about authority tonight. And, um, and so in going forth, uh, we, with prayer, you may or may not know that on normally on Sunday nights, when especially when Bible Institute is in session, we have uh, what we call base prayer, which is all a part of the same uh, uh, prayer here at the church. And at 6 o'clock, we meet in the AIM building over there, and, you know, I do a short teaching or give direction for a prayer that night. We pray about 30 minutes or so, and uh, then we go into groups. And so we have particular groups where people go and pray where their hearts are connected or, you know, that kind of thing. A lot of them have been praying together for a very long time. And uh, so we have groups that pray on Sunday night, and we have some that do uh, pray during the week as well. And so if you would like to get involved in that, you can let me know. Some of the groups are a little bit larger, but most of the groups are two or three, and we have a couple that, um, that are just a single person that had something on their life that's a leader here in the church, and we um, have them praying. Uh, one of them is the business uh, owners group. Uh, Christina Woldy prays over that, and then Tammy Matkins prays over the signs and wonders group, and so they get together and pray and help each other. So. So by two or three, and uh, with that, and so during the week we have prayer groups. Uh, once a quarter, we try to have on the wall prayer where we all come together corporately and pray together, and that's part of what's happening on Sunday nights. So this Sunday night at six o'clock, we will meet again. Uh, so to pray on Sunday nights in July, and um, and then on August 14th, we'll go back to our regular schedule. All right, when Bible Institute starts. The other thing that is happening um, on August 1st, uh, we will start having early morning prayer by Zoom. And uh, so uh, of 18 months of disobeying the Lord, because that's early. Mm. Hallelujah. It may not be early for some of y'all that go out to the arsenal or something because you guys are out there in line and, you know, getting off at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. But, um, you know, and so uh, the Lord has instructed me to pray, and so I thought it was good to pray at home. But no, yeah. praise the Lord. So starting August 1st at 7 a.m., we're going to pray uh, by Zoom, and if you've been getting the text, uh, that same Zoom code is what we'll use uh, for prayer. And uh, so he's given me some direction regarding that, and then if you're on, we'll, we'll talk to you about that. So let's see if there's any more housekeeping stuff. I think that's about it. Praise the Lord. All right. So um, last year, um, uh, the Lord had me teach on why we pray. And then I also taught on a speaking kingdom. And I can't go back and, you know, reteach all of that. But we're going to talk about authority uh, tonight some. And, uh, and so we're just going to kind of pick up, and I'll do a summary real quick. And we know that uh, God gave the, the earth to Adam and uh, told him to have dominion and to rule over the earth. And then they did something that was not good and disobeyed the Lord and turned the earth over to Satan. And uh, he became the God of this world, Colossians tells us. So with that, you know, Jesus, of course, in his death, burial, and resurrection, 
it says that um, in Matthew that he gave us the keys when he was raised from the dead. So he gave those keys back to us. And so if we believe on him, we have those keys in our hand, right? Amen. And so, um, so we carry those keys, and he said he's given us the keys to the kingdom. And uh, so we have that. So what we're going to talk about tonight, in April of 2021, Pastor was, uh, we have noon prayer every, every Wednesday right here in this room. And Pastor mostly leads, or I, or some of the, uh, the staff does. And uh, this was something that he said, and I wanted to read this to you, and then we'll go on from there. So in, uh, in uh, April 2021, he said, who will, who will, who will make a highway? Who will make the crooked places straight? Who will uh, bring the valley up? Who will bring the mountain down? Rivers in the desert, who will pray? Who will make a way? Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Come for your words. Remember in the speaking king, and we talked about that. Come for your words. I need more words. I need more words. It's just interesting to me that when the Lord talks to us, he doesn't talk to us about belief. Because, you know, we, he hasn't addressed that with us. And then the other thing he addresses with us is I don't hear you praising. And so our words and our praise is the things that he's been, give me, give me, give me, give me more. Then it goes on to say, and the prayer groups, they must also say and not just pray. They must also say. They must say. Some things you say, some things you pray. Some things you say, teach them to declare and decree a thing. And that's Job 2.28, that if you decree a thing out of your mouth, it shall be established. And pray it out, but then declare, declare, decree, not enough to pray it out. It's not enough to pray it out. What's on my heart, you've got to declare and decree. You've got to declare and decree. Make it so, and he says that several times, make it so. The power of the Holy Ghost, and there will be a performance. So he's saying, the Lord is saying, that if we would declare and decree a thing, that there will be a performance of what we say. Amen. Hallelujah. And there's a performance. Just like Mary, there's a performance. There's a performance of things believed because it was said. Be it unto me, nothing impossible, nothing impossible. But I need your words. 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 For a place and a heart of full assurance, from a place of, uh, from a place and a heart of full assurance, of full assurance, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no double-mindedness, work it out. Work it out, work it out. Work it out, work it out. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's turn to Mark 11, 23 and 24. And we'll, we'll go here and then we'll get the rocket and roll in here. Mark 11, 23. And this is the scripture Brother Hagin wrote. No kidding. Um, we, uh, those of us that are on pastoral staff, Pastor Mark, Pastor Ron, and myself, and Pastor Rob, uh, attend at Rainbow Bible Training Center along with other people here in the congregation and the, the president of that school where we attended. This was a, a scripture that the Lord gave him to get him off the deathbed. Um, he had a deformed heart and some, several other things. Um, even when he was a baby, they thought he was dead and they were going to bury him. And his grandmother noticed that there was life in him. And so she almost buried him alive. And then so uh, all the deformities, heart deformities, and all that stuff that he had, they said no one had lived past the age of 16, I think it was. And um, he lived till he was 86 because this word got him up off the deathbed. Praise the Lord. So Mark 11, 23, for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. And that part of what the Lord said through pastor to us was no doubt. No doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So in this passage, he's talking about praying and he's talking about saying. So both it, that uh, he addressed in the what pastor prayed out for us. Let's go to uh, Matthew 18, 18. So there are some things that we are to declare. There are some things that we are to decree, but there, you know, uh, we also to pray. But once we pray, we get direction from the Lord. There are some things that we say. 
Hallelujah. And in Matthew 18, 18, it says, Surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. So how do you bind things? Now, by wrestling and fighting with it? No. You do it with your mouth. And you loose, um, whatever you loose on the earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that I ask, uh, that they ask, I will be, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Now listen to it from the Amplified Classic. Truly, I tell you, whatever you forbid and declare to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit and declare proper and lawful on earth must be what is already permitted in heaven. Again, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree, harmonize together, make a symphony together about whatever, anything and everything they may ask, it will come to pass and be done for them. He didn't supposition about that. I suppose if y'all get together and maybe talk about it, you know, he said, no, it will be done for them. So here is saying, surely I say to you, not uh, surely I say God is going to bind and loose, but I say, uh, surely I say to you that if you bind, yeah. Yeah. if you loose yeah. us here on the earth, what did Matthew say? He's given us the keys to the kingdom, right? He brought that back for us and he's given it to us. And so we were talking about last week when I was doing the offering about there's a God side to things and there's a man side to things. And so a lot of times us humans are waiting for God to do something when God has already done what he's going to do and he's telling us to do something. Our part. Amen. There's a, a term that is going around the body of Christ for the last several years. God is in control. He's not in control if he's given dominion and authority to us. Amen. He's, what, he's done everything he's going to do about the earth unless we ask him. Amen. And give him access into the earth. So he's waiting on us to do something. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So, and so whatever we resist or whatever we declare unlawful, whatever we don't permit, it says that it won't be permitted in heaven. So if we're permitting things or allowing things in our life, in our body, in Romans, it says, let not sin reign in your mortal body. And same thing, don't, let not sickness reign in your mortal body. How many of us put up with stuff and permit things to be in our lives? You know, <clears throat> something's chronic in our bodies, you know, it's part of getting older. And we don't do anything about it. Just because he's a part of getting older. Well, whatever you permit and whatever you're not resisting, God's not going to do anything about that. He's given us the keys to the kingdom to do something about it. So <clears throat> the word of God always works when we work it. Hallelujah. And um, so let's look at... There's a couple of scriptures I want to look at before I go to this. If I can find here, yeah. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 4.13. And since we have the same spirit of faith, anybody in here got a spirit of faith on the inside of you? If you're born again, yes, you have a spirit of faith. According to what is written, I believe and I therefore spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 7 and, uh, through 9. Who will ascend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ to the, uh, from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. Where? In your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Or, and then it says that, you, that if you confess. So our mouth is involved in all of this, Right? We have to get our mouth in gear with all this. Um, very quickly, let's look at Deuteronomy 28, 13. 
You know, in Deuteronomy 28, that's where all the blessings and curses are, right? And this is something that he says um, about us in the blessing part. He said, the Lord will make you the head, which the head is indicative of authority. So I will make you the head and not the tail. I will make you above only and not beneath. So this is also telling us in the Old Testament what our position is. If we obey God, he's going to make us the head, not the tail. And we'll be above only and not beneath. Let's look at Ephesians 1, 19 very quickly. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power, which is to us word? King James says, to, uh, in New King James says us. It's towards us. It's for us. It is who we are. Amen. We sang about uh, I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. This power right here is to us word. So we have power, right? Because this tells us that. That power is to us word. Who believe? That's important. Who believe? So we looked at Romans and it says who believe. In Mark 11, it talks about who believe. In 2 Corinthians, talking about who believe. According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above, not just above, far above all principality, power, and might, and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And Ephesians 2, 6 says that he has raised us up together and made us sit together with him in heavenly places. So if the body is sitting in heavenly places and it says above all principality, power, might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but that is which to come. That means that under our feet is every principality, power, might and dominion that's here now and that is to come. Right. Hallelujah. So this tells us who we are. We have power and authority because Jesus said so. Jesus made it available to us. Glory to God. In Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you authority. One uh, translation says power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall hurt you. Amen. Glory. So the Lord is telling pastor to us that there are some things that we pray about and there are some things that we say about that we deal with with saying. Now, I want to share this story with you. Um, anybody remember uh, Dr. Norval Hayes? I've heard this story a couple times here recently. And uh, he was a um, minister of God. He's in heaven now. And um, he taught on faith. He taught on healing. He taught on worship, uh, your authority in Christ. He talked about uh, he was a good demon caster adder. Uh, if you listen to him and uh, things start manifesting in his meetings and stuff. So I've been listening to him a lot, quite a bit lately. I love Dr. Norba Hayes. When I first came into the body of Christ, when I was 22, I cut, that's who, uh, him along with some others, I cut my teeth on. So I absolutely love him. But I've heard him tell this story about his daughter, Zona. His daughter, Zona, um, she uh, had 12 gross show up on her body. And uh, so he took her to the doctor, and the doctor cut them off. And after a while, they came back, and 42 growths were on her body. So he says that he prayed for five years. And what he said, God, I want you to heal my, why don't you heal my daughter's body? Please heal my daughter. Please heal my daughter. Why aren't you healing my daughter? Lord, please. Do. And so five years, that's how he's praying. And how many of you know that healing belongs to us? And so we don't have to necessarily pray for, pray for healing to come. Healing has already come in the form of Jesus Christ and his stripes on his back. We just have to receive what he's already done for us. Amen? So uh, he was faithfully praying for his daughter for five years. And so he wasn't getting any answers. 
And so the more he prayed, the bigger the growth got on her body. And she begged him to take her back to the doctor so they could cut those growths off her body. They began to split open and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so he said, no, we're going to get a miracle from heaven. And he said, I'm demanding from the Lord. We're getting a miracle from heaven. And I'm not going back to the doctor. We're going to get a miracle. And so five years go by and nothing happens. So what he decided to do was change his posture. So he laid down on the floor in his house on his back for three weeks, screaming at God. Why won't you heal my daughter's body? These girls are on my daughter's body. Why won't you heal my daughter's body? God, why won't you heal my daughter's body? For three weeks, hours during the day, he would do that. Then God didn't answer him. So he decided not to lay on his back. He started laying on his belly. And so for the next three weeks, he laid on his belly and pounded on the floor. God, why won't you heal my daughter? These growths are on my daughter's body. Why won't you take these growths off my daughter's body? And so he's screaming three weeks, hours a day on the floor, pounding, asking the Lord to take these growths on his off his daughter's body. So he's walking across the living room one day. And one step he takes, he's on the floor. The next step he takes, he's in a cloud in heaven. And so he said he gets there and uh, he said the atmosphere was just pure truth. It's pure light. Nothing like here on the earth. And he said you almost didn't want to speak up there. The atmosphere was so pure. And uh, <clears throat> he said I was granted some place in heaven. And he said all of a sudden I heard, <laughs> I heard the, Lord, the God's voice go, uh, how, how long are you going to put up with those growths? How long are you going to go around in darkness and put up with those growths on your daughter's body? Now, he's been praying five years, and he's been praying six weeks. God, why won't you heal my daughter? And the God, then God is reversing the deal. And he's saying, how long are you going to stumble around in darkness, and how long are you going to put up with those gross on your daughter's body. And he said, well, well God, I, I'm not putting up with them. It's on her body. I'm not putting up with them. God, they're on her body. And the Lord said, you're the head of your house. What does that mean? You have authority. You have authority. Now, <clears throat> we've been in a drought, whatever you want to call all this, in Alabama this year. And so critters have been trying to come in my house. And so what I tell them is, you do not pay the mortgage here. And you can't come in. And so there's sticky pads everywhere in the garage, around the front door. I sprayed bug spray so much one day that I choked myself. <laughs> That's how much I don't like critters. What if we were that diligent about things that we put up with on our body, in our family, in our house, in our city, in our land. What if we were that diligent about it? So the Lord said, how long are you going to put up with those growths on your daughter's body? You're the head of your house. And so he's whimpering. Say, uh, putting it off on, it's amazing how you get in prison, God like that, and God starts calling you on the carpet, and you start blame shifting to somebody else. They're on her body. Lord, they're not on my body, they're on her body. But you're the head of your house. He said, I have not heard you curse those growths on your daughter's body like I cursed the fig tree. He's not, he's prayed for five years and praying is good because praying brought him to the place where he is now. So we're not negating prayer. The prayer is important. We're a praying church around here. So we're not negating that, but his diligence and his faithfulness and his desire and getting an answer brought him to this place of, I got to make a decision now. God is calling me on the carpet and saying, I need to do something. 
I've been screaming at him saying, why won't you do something? And God is turning it back on me saying, why aren't you doing something? He's given us the keys. We have the authority. Hallelujah. So he said, if you will believe and not doubt, like the scriptures we just read and what he said and what he said to pastor in prayer that day, if you will believe and not doubt, if you will curse those growths in your daughter's body, they will dry up from the roof and disappear. So <clears throat> he said in that atmosphere, it was easy to believe. I could have done anything in that atmosphere. And he said when the Lord started, he started descending back down into his body, he could hear the Lord said, if you will believe and not doubt, you'll see the glory, the glory of God. If you believe and not doubt, and the more he descended down, it got weaker and weaker. And he said the more he descended down, he could feel the air or the lack of faith in this atmosphere, this arena. And he knows why in Timothy now that it says fight the good fight of faith because there's things grappling for your attention and pulling you away from the things of God here. So he came back into his body. And he said that Zona was in the other room and her boyfriend Bobby was there with her. And so as he was going towards the room to curse those gross, he said a voice said to him in a suggestive tone, you don't want to go in there and talk. You don't want to embarrass your daughter. Your daughter's in there with her boyfriend. You don't want to embarrass her. Uh, you don't want to do that to your daughter. You don't want to embarrass her. Don't go in there right now. Wait. And he said, I don't care about embarrassing my daughter. And so he said, I'm going in there and curse those gross. And as he's going in there, he said, please don't go in there. Please, please don't go in there. And he went right in there and he got in there and he said, Zona. And she said, Daddy, Daddy, what's wrong with you? He said, I just got back from heaven. <laughs> and he said, I'm going to curse those gross on your body and they're going to die, uh, die from the root and dry up from your body. Do you believe me, Zona? Daddy, Daddy, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And then he looks at Bobby and he said, Do you believe me, Bobby? <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Hayes. Yes, sir, Mr. Hayes. Yeah. Whatever you say, Mr. Hayes, he says. And so he cursed those roots on her body and nothing changed. And he said when he walked away, he never prayed another, because he had declared out of his mouth, what he said, and he said, from that point on, I just praise the Lord. Every time I thought about it, Father, I thank you that those growths are gone off my daughter's body. Father, I thank you. I cursed them from the root, and I expect them to go. Father, I thank you. My daughter is healed. And he said he would just rejoice, and she would hear him in the house. She'd come in from school, and he's going, Father, I thank you for, for healing my daughter. I thank you those growths are gone from my, I rejoice that those growths are gone. And she's going, Daddy, stop it, Daddy. And he said, I don't care. I praise the Lord that your gross are gone. Amen. So he did this for 40 days and 40 nights. No change. So on the 41st day, she's in her room and she's got clothes on the bed. She put hangers on them and then she would lift them up to put them in the closet and she could see those gross all over her body. She looks at them every day. She counts them every day. So she reaches on the bed pick something up, put it in a closet. She can see the gross on her arms. When she reaches back again and she went to, goes to put brand new skin, all the gross are gone. She's got baby skin and she screams, Daddy! <laughs> and then he said that she got so excited she started running and she hit the door frame and knocked herself out. So, <laughs> so he, he heard he took off running and so when he got up there uh, she she woken up and she said daddy look look daddy look daddy the all of them are gone it's baby skin it's spooky daddy it's so spooky look 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 brand new skin on her body now the Lord's telling us okay pray but there are some things you need to say out of your mouth what are you putting up with in your life? 
what pain, what sickness, what <clears throat> whatever it might be. So let's just take 30 seconds here. You think of something you've been, just maybe one thing that you've been putting up with in your life and let's address it. So think about it. Maybe like a pest that tries to get in your house. Maybe you've uh, <clears throat> prayed about it and it's still lingering. You can have what you say. So Father, each and every one of us right now are putting up with something in our lives. And so Father, I thank you right now. So you, you don't have to say it out loud. You can whisper it because the devil can hear and your body can hear or your finances can hear. Things have ears, you know. And you can curse whatever that is and deal with it right now in your life. It may be an addiction. It may be a habit. Father, I thank you that as they speak, as they deal with whatever they've been putting up with, Father, I thank you for revelation. Revelation. to curse the root of whatever it is in their life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. You know, he said when he was in heaven, the Lord told him that about why are you putting up with those gross in your daughter's body? He said, but at that point, he still didn't know what to do. And God had to give him revelation on what to do. And that's what he said. Uh, if you will say, if you will curse those things on your body. So that's a lesson for us. Even though he's gone and he's in heaven right now, that's a lesson for us. Glory to God. Um, <clears throat> you know, with all of this in mind, and, um, you know, we were talking about earlier that uh, on the wall prayer is to pray for you know, we avail ourselves to pray for whatever God wants us to pray for or to say and declare and decree those things. And so as I was preparing this, uh, this, um, this story and you're talking about authority, uh, I was listening to this pastor in Canada and he was talking about this instance where uh, this pastor in Russia, he was inside his grandfather, he's inside his home <laughs> And he looks out the window and a bear had come up and grabbed his grandson. And uh, so he ran outside and the, and the bear is at the edge of the property with the kid in his mouth. And he yells at the bear. He says, hey, you. He's talking to a bear now. And he says, he's mine, not yours. You can't have him. And he says the bear dropped the boy and went off in the woods. And he grabbed the kid and brought him back in the house. That, you know, that wasn't a time to pray. That was a time to declare and decree who you are. He's mine, not yours. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So declaring and decreeing some things, saying some things out of your mouth. Um, and not only just about your personal body, but being on the wall, which the Lord has called us to be, uh, he's counting on us for some things. He's counting on us to watch on the wall regarding our lives. He's counting us to watch on the wall regarding our families. He's counting on us to watch on the wall regarding our city, our neighborhoods where we live. He's counting on us to watch over this, uh, our state, our nation, and the world. So we're not just on the wall, and, and it's great that we're on the wall of our lives. That's wonderful. But I tell people very often, the gospel is about you, but it's not all about you. Because Jesus came for God so loved the world that he gave. Amen. And the fact that we're still here means that we are an occupying force in the earth for God. 
And he needs us. Yeah, John Wesley says this. And it seems as though that uh, God can do nothing for humanity unless someone prays. And so we are his agents here in the earth to pray, to give him access so that he can do some things in the earth. Amen? Hallelujah. So a couple of things I thought about testimonies, I guess you would say. Uh, anybody know who Bill Winston is? And uh, he, uh, when he first started his church in, in um, Chicago, and uh, there was, the, I think they were getting ready to buy the shopping center. And this lady came to him and she said, preacher, what are you going to do about what's happening on our street? And he didn't know who she was. She just came out of nowhere. And he said, what are you talking about, lady? And she said, these drug dealers are coming into our neighborhoods and they're messing with our kids and they're bringing these drugs in our neighborhood. What are you going to do about it? Somehow she knew that he had authority to do something about this problem that they had. So he's thinking quick, you know, what am I going, what am I going to do about it? And it's not his neighborhood, you know. But she's counting on him. And he said he begins to pray. And the Lord told him to get a bottle of olive oil and pray over that olive oil. And he gave it to her. He said, go and pray and, and pour this down the middle of your street. And it gave us some words to say. To say. So she went back and she poured that olive oil down her street. Those drug dealers went to run in and got out of here. Yeah. We are God's occupying force here in the earth. So now I had heard that story, uh, that account, I guess not a story, but an account. And um, <clears throat> so one night, um, I, uh, not in the house that I'm in right now, but uh, in a different home, it's around midnight. And I'm sitting there watching HGTV, minding my own business. And the Lord said, go in your cabinets, get your olive oil, and go anoint the entrances into your subdivision. So in my head, I'm going, yeah, that makes sense. And then, it, you know, it's midnight. <laughs> Nobody should be out, but at the same time, there may be somebody out, and they see you pouring olive oil down the street. So I got the olive oil and got in the car, prayed over it, and uh, went, and at the entrance, all the entrances into my neighborhood, I, there was a streak of olive oil. I don't know, Angie used to live in, I don't know if she saw it or not. But uh, <clears throat> so at the entrance, the front entrance, the back entrance, side entrance, I'm out there in the middle of the night pouring olive oil in there. And what, what was happening is that we had people that were coming into our neighborhood, vandalizing in our neighborhood. And so because we're close to the interstate, they'd come in, you know, throw all the furniture in the pool and do all these different things. And so uh, and tear up our stuff that we're paying for uh, in an HOA and, uh, and disappear. And so uh, that's what the Lord told me to do was to get the olive oil and anoint my neighborhood. And then things started calming down. And so uh, when I moved to my other neighborhood. Uh, the Lord uh, had me do that too a few days after I moved in there and uh, I did the same thing in that I need to go back and do some more of that hey, praise the Lord <laughs> <clears throat> so we are God's change agent here in the earth and so um, when things are happening and things are going on um, I talked to one of our security officers this past week so on Thursday of last week on the local news I heard uh, the newscaster say that in one week in Madison County, we had seven overdoses of fentanyl, from fentanyl. And one of our security officers had to make the notification for three of those in one day. And I was talking to him about it, and he said, it is running rampant in our city now. And um, so I said, okay, we'll get on it. So I'm telling you, now you know. When I moved here 20 something years ago, you know, uh, people were moving here from Atlanta and other places because of the crime and all of that. And with the growth of our cities now, what was in big cities are starting to happen here now. And so I went, nope, 
no, 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 no. <laughs> not happening. 2017, um, <clears throat> I had heard on the news that from January to March of that year, that had been eight deaths in just that span of time. The whole entire year before, there had been eight deaths in the whole year in Madison County. And just in that span of time, there were eight. And so I was talking to our security officer about it, uh, uh, that. And, uh, you know, some of it was murder, some of it had to do with drugs, you know, the different things like that. And the Lord had me begin to pray that this is not happening in our city. We're watchers. We're watchers on the wall. You might think, well, you just go about your day and you just, you know, drive and whatever. But this affects our kids. This affects us being able to go to the grocery store or, you know, do anything, you know, we want to do. But this is our city. It's not the devil's city. And so uh, we, we are the occupying force here. You know, and in the last few years, uh, probably three, four years, uh, the Lord, four years, the Lord has had me drive around our city and pray and declare things out of my mouth. And so I drive around and I, uh, you know, he lead me and guide me where to go. And uh, sometimes I'll stop in a particular area and what I've been doing, you know, I'll look at a, a hospital. I declare the glory of God on that hospital. I declare the glory of God on that church. I declare the glory of God on that business. I declare the glory of God up and down these cities that people cannot come here in our city and bring things that are in other cities. I thank you, Father God, that you're watching over our police department. You're watching over our first responders. And as they're responding to things, Father, I thank you they have wisdom to know what to do when they're going on calls. They, they uh, follow the inward intuition because we have a natural intuition and, uh, and we pray for them to be led by the Holy Ghost and the angels help them. Yes. Hallelujah. I declare revival over this place. The move of God over this city, over these cities, that God would come in and have his way. Yes. Hallelujah. We have authority. We can say what we want. We can declare and decree and establish a thing of what we want to happen. Amen. Rather than sitting and looking at the news going, oh my God, this world is going to hell in a handbasket. Well, you can have what you say. <laughs> the world could go to hell in a handbasket if that's what you say. But you can turn this thing around by saying, declaring the crane out of your mouth, what do you want? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother Hagen, who we follow, um, who is our mentor, uh, spiritual father, uh, was based out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And... Um, <laughs> And being in Tulsa, we call it Tulsa Jerusalem, <laughs> because there's so many major ministries there. And uh, Or Roberts, Brother Hagen, uh, T.L. Osborne, uh, um, Charles Capps, you know, all, all of them were, a lot of them were based out of there. And um, so when those patriarchs started uh, graduating to heaven, <clears throat> what I started noticing was that things that weren't in this city before started coming into the city. So I think it was Brother Oral Roberts that went first. Then, no, it was John Osteen. Then Brother Oral Roberts, then Till Osborne, and then Brother Hagen, I think. And so after Brother Hagen passed away, and when I start going to heaven, when I go out there for conferences, I notice all these casinos everywhere. And uh, I said to someone, I said, where did, <laughs> Where did these come from? And one of them is right uh, a mile down the road from Oral Roberts University. You can stand where the praying hands in and see the casino right there. And I said, what happened? And uh, someone uh, that I, who is a prayer, uh, a person who prays, said, we noticed that these things started happening after uh, Brother Hagen died. So what that told me is that the authority that he carried in his life kept those things at bay. You may think one man had that kind of, you know, and I know that there were others that prayed as well, 
But in James, it says that Elijah was a man just like us. He had feelings just like us. He prayed and he, the heavens did not give rain for three and a half years. One man prayed under the old covenant and it didn't rain for three and a half years. And then after that, he prayed again and the heavens gave rain. And it says in one translation, like he affected the whole earth. It did not rain upon the earth. You might think, well, I'm just one person. What can I do? Daniel was one person. He looked in the book and saw that, it, that uh, Israel should be free. And he began to set himself to pray. And God said, I heard, I came. What the angel say to him? I came for your words. From the very first day you prayed, I came for your words. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, taking authority over things in our own physical body, in our families. What's reigning in your family? What sickness is reigning in your family? What habit is reigning in your family? What uh, looks like it might be hereditary or uh, generational curse, which Jesus already took credit curse, by the way. So, <clears throat> and not let it rain. What does rain mean? Lord over you. Your knees, you know, are hurting, and it says buckle. That's raining. Your knees telling you what to do instead of you telling your knees what to do. I'm having to talk to mine. Praise the Lord. Not just pray. Say some things. Declare some things. What are we putting up with that we shouldn't put up with? What are we allowing in our lives, in our family lives, in our city, in our nation? We will have revival. Amen. Amen. Our children are born for signs and wonders, not all this foolishness that's going on in the earth. They were born for signs and wonders. I was reading a scripture yesterday, it was Psalm 139, I think it's 16 and 17, and it says, uh, before you were formed in the womb, your name, you were written in my book. They are born for signs and wonders, not to question who they are, you know, uh, I identify with this and identify with that. They're kingdom kids. Hallelujah. And we're we just going to let it just sweep along and sweep along and sweep along because that's the current of this world? No. We can say some things. If they acting like the devil right in front of your face, I don't care. You're born for signs and wonders. You're going to serve the Lord. Grace shall be your peace. My children are taught of the Lord, and grace shall be their peace and their undisturbed composure. Saying, what are we saying? What are we putting up with? We have authority. Let's stand up. Praise the Lord. And maybe, you know, uh, <laughs> We were singing earlier, I am who I am, because the I am tells me who I am. Maybe we need a revelation, even a greater revelation. We are the occupy, occupying force in this earth. Amen. Now, uh, we're going to spend just a few minutes here praying. You think of something, your life, we, you know, we pray things regarding your body, maybe in your family, maybe in your neighborhood, maybe in this city. Maybe you stuff that you're seeing in the world uh, today, in the nation, that you want to see changed. Start declaring and decreeing some things. You know, I, I have a, <laughs> when the Lord asked me to get in my car and drive around the city, you know, uh, I was like, Lord, who am I? And at first I said, I just got home. <laughs> I'm just like you. I got flesh just like you. 
I, went, I just got home from the grocery store. I don't want to drive. And when I didn't hear a response, I went, oh, okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. And so I got in my car and started driving. And just even following my heart of where to go, following my heart of what to say when I got there. Just, I, I remember one time, a particular time, sitting in a church parking lot declaring that it was full, declaring that the person who was the, the uh, pastor over that church, that he would get up and declare the word of God and speak the word of God. I don't know anything about who that person was, but it was being led by him to do that. Amen. You know, we're not in competition with the churches here. We're all on the same side. As long as they're with Jesus, they're with us. Amen. We are in competition against the devil. Yeah. Amen. And as long as they're fighting against him, we're with them, right? And so, I, you know, they're a candlestick. I want them to stand before the Lord. And, uh, and the Lord says, well done. Yes. Amen. Just as much as I pray for these two. They're part of the body. They're part of our body. So you got your one thing? Father, we just thank you right now. And I'm just, I'm gonna pray for the, the pastors and leaders in our uh, cities. So Father, I lift up to you those candlesticks that are in these churches in this city. Father, those that you sent here, those that you sent here to bring the word of God, those that you sent here, Father, to proclaim salvation, those that you sent here, Father, I thank you that they will stand completing you. Father, I thank you that they will do what you called them to do. Father, I thank you that even if there's something that they're saying that they don't understand, that as they're standing up and proclaiming it out of their mouth, Father, I thank you that you are, uh, you fill their mouth with your words and they declare the glory of God. Father, I thank you for working in them. Father, I thank you they will live a long life and fulfill the call that's upon their lives. And Father, if there are any that are standing in pulpits that are not supposed to be there, we thank you, Father, that you get you adjust them and course correct them and get them where they need to be. Father, we thank you for all those who are standing in pulpits in Madison, Decatur, Athens, Huntsville, and the surrounding cities. Father, we thank you for your divine words coming out of their mouth. We thank you for the authority that they carry in their lives. Father, I thank you that they realize who they are and what they can do and what they can have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That they fulfill the law of Christ in their life. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, those that have been disappointed, that they have been hurt, and they now stood. Some of them have even left the ministry because of a hurt or disappointment or whatever it might be. The call of God is still on the inside of them. The call that you put in them is still there. And so, Father, the, your word says in Romans that the gifts and calls of God are without repentance. That means that you don't change your mind. That you don't revoke them. And that call is still there. So, Father, I thank you for that call rising up on the inside of them. For those that are to stand in the last day, <coughs> Father, and I thank you that they have courage to stand up and boldly proclaim the word of God. Paul said to pray for me that I might have boldness to speak as I ought to speak. And so, Father, I thank you that they speak as they ought to speak. They have courage to stand up and say the word of God and with the, hold up the standard of the word of God in the face of opposition of a world going in an opposite direction. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that as the days and weeks and months and years are ahead for us, Father, you're occupying for us here in the earth, that you will have us to pray some things and you'll have us to say some things. And Father, we thank you that we make ourselves available to you right now in this room. We make ourselves available to you, to use in the earth, to pray, to yield to you. Father, thank you that our flesh not keep us out from you using us, that our soul not keep us out from you, you using us. When you need someone to pray, when you need someone to say, when you need someone to declare and decree your word, Father, we're available. 
We are available to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you for giving us a greater, greater revelation of our words and that we can speak and declare and decree a thing and establish a thing out of our mouths. Father, I thank you that we, just one person, Father, uh, in their living room or in their bedroom or in their bathroom or in their car or on their job can say something and change and alter the course of things because they yielded themselves to the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Daniel 6, 8, it says, Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed. So we are his kings and priests in the earth. And so when we start declaring and decreeing something as his agents in the earth, it says it cannot be changed. According to the law of the Medes and the per, per, uh, uh, Persians, also do, uh, does not alter. So we can declare and decree a thing out of our mouths and it can be established and it cannot be altered. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, I speak into our nation. And Father, regardless of what we see with our eyes, Father, this nation was raised up so that people could honor and worship you. And no matter what we see with our eyes and hear with our ears, Father, this nation has sown into the world. It's sown missionaries into the world. Father, missionaries have gone and even given their life's blood so that people can hear the gospel. Father, this nation has sown more money into foreign missions than any other nation on the earth. And so, Father, your kingdom operates on sowing and reaping, <laughs> seed, time, and harvest. And so, Father, as we've sown into other nations for them to have revival, for them to have crusades, for them to have signs and wonders and miracles, Father, we're due a harvest in America, in the United States. And so, Father, we call forth the harvest of signs and wonders and miracles for our nation. Father, we declare that this nation will rise up in a, an awakening, an awakening up to God, that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ will rise up. Awake, awake, O oh sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will give thee light. And so, Father, I thank you that the body of Christ is awake, is awake. And Father, revival. We thank you, Father, for the glory of God. We thank you, Father, that the glory of God will fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. The glory of God will fill these United States. Father, as the waters cover the sea, we thank you for your glory being seen. Father, we thank you for signs and wonders and miracles being made manifest in this earth. Hallelujah. Father, we're thankful for the healing revival. We're thankful to you for the charismatic renewal. We thank you, Father, for all the other moves of God you have. But you're going to be faithful to this generation. Father, we thank you that you're faithful to this generation. That with our own eyes, we will see miracles and signs and wonders. People coming to God. People coming to the Lord. Hallelujah. In a greater way than they've ever known. Father Smith Wigglesworth, one of your servants declared that with all other moves that there were, that the last day revival will be greater than all of them put together. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Turn. <laughs> You're turning the hearts of men. You're turning, Father, hearts of the children back to their fathers and the hearts of the fathers back into their children. Hallelujah. Father, we even pray for our relatives right now that don't know you, those that are backslidden right now. We thank you for laborers being sent across their path to preach to them the words of life. Father, we command blinders to come off of their eyes right now that they may see the truth of the word of God. And Father, we thank you for laborers. Make us a laborer. But Father, send laborers to our relatives. Send laborers across our path and make us a laborer for someone else that's praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Our children would not be carried off by other gods, no matter what they are. Father, our children would not be carried off to serve other gods to serve the, the, the prince of the power of the air. Father, to serve all the things that are floating around in this generation, in, the, uh, in this culture. But Father, we thank you. Uh, they're born. They're born. They will not be satisfied, Father, until they're operating in signs and wonders and miracles. They will not be satisfied until they're preaching the gospel out of their own mouth. They will not be satisfied. Everything that they're trying to fill their hearts up with right now, Father, who will never fill that hole. There's a destiny on the inside of them that nothing but God alone can satisfy. <laughs> Nothing but God alone can satisfy. <laughs> ha 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 ha. And we thank you for it, Father God. We thank you. <laughs> I will build my church, Jesus said, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Out of every kindred, every tribe, every tongue, every people, every nation, he will have his harvest. <laughs> and Father, we'll all be gathered around the throne. Blessing and glory and honor and power and praise be unto the Lamb. <laughs> glory and power and praise blessing and honor be unto the Lamb hallelujah hallelujah thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus hallelujah hallelujah thank you Lord